if you think you have a cure for cancer. You may not be able to do it until the FDA says you can. Uh, in the meantime, the FDA is promoting, and all around the world are promoting mammograms, and somehow um, the rates of breast cancer keep going up, and that's because mammograms cause breast cancer. So, and not so very long ago, I heard, um, that's 1972, I heard for the first time that mammogram, that women shouldn't have breast can uh, mammograms more than once every five years, and I poo-pooed it until I did some research, and it's <laughs> obvious. You know, the rates of, of uh, milliram exposure for each mammogram, you've got to get breast cancer. Well, in most cases, uh, freedom of speech is something you have to buy. Uh, it costs thousands of dollars to go on, on most TV stations. Yeah. We have the, the, we're fortunate here in Burlington to have uh, public access TV stations such as the one we're on now. And it costs, uh, it doesn't cost us anything to uh, express our point of view here today. But uh, even these public access TV stations are endangered if, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. if the cable companies stop paying 5% of their income. And, and why shouldn't our station be able to broadcast on the satellites? Or mm -hmm. why shouldn't public access be included if people are picking up the signal with rabbit ears? Uh, if you're going to have real freedom of speech, I don't think it should be something people should have to buy. I think everybody should have an equal opportunity. And we, and we do here, but I, I would like to see it expanded. Uh, yeah, I said that I yesterday at Channel 17, that the hope in communication, mass communication and media is community access, uh, television and radio. That those, that's the, the hope of the future for intelligent communication. It has nothing to do with CBS, NBC, and the rest of those folks. That's trash. Um, mm. What will happen? We're right on the verge of mar of martial law, I think, and and that will really the do that us came all home. in. <laughs> well, the pos is it posse comitatus? Yeah. That well, that's not being threatened by the troops that we brought home from Iraq. They're bringing troops home, especially to act in the United yeah. on our, on home soil, which is was against the law for centuries, I think. And so. What's going to well, happen? you know, one of the problems that we're facing, those of us who want to stop the war in Iraq and Afghanistan immediately, is what are we going to do with the soldiers who come home? Yeah. I mean, first of all, their health is not good. I mean, that's been testified to over and over and over again that they are in bad health. So we have this additional medical expense that we're avoiding by keeping them over there where nobody can see it and we don't have to do anything at home. Maybe they'll get killed. Yeah. 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 The other part of it is, where are the jobs? I mean, we're already up to almost 7% unemployment. What are we going to do with these people? Unless we put them on government payrolls. And maybe they can work on rebuilding roads and highways and work on our infrastructure. But uh, if we're not willing to spend that money to put the people to work already in this country and unemployed, how are we going to put them to work? Well, we won't be spending all that money on the war, so they probably could put some of it to work. Maybe. Jobs. Maybe. Maybe. I, I have this feeling that uh, every time, at least in the state of Vermont, we move toward a rainy day surplus, they wanted to go back, uh, cut taxes, and send money back to the, uh, to the taxpayers. They don't want to have a fund for rainy days. I mean, we're in the strangest situation doing exactly the opposite of what government ought to be doing. Here is a government, and all the candidates are talking about making sure we don't spend too much money as a state. And I'm saying, no, we've got to spend more. In bad times, we need more social services. We've got to increase the staff at the unemployment office. We've got to increase the staff um, in the human services areas. We've got to increase the staff to provide mental health. Uh, and employee assistance and so on. But no, that's not going to happen. We're going to cut positions. Uh, to, and I think we should be raising taxes, not lowering taxes now. Well, and it should be income taxes on the upper levels of yeah, income. Of and that's, that's the place where we have to look at all the time. And if it comes out that we have to tax people at 100% over $75,000, all the money over $75,000, I'm for it. I mean, I don't care. Uh, we, it, 
the, making the society work for everybody is more important than preserving the wealth of the rich. Yeah, I just want to say one other way we could save money or have more money to use would be to decriminalize drugs and get, mm -hmm. uh, we have more people in jail than we have in schools. More people in jail than any, but any other country in the world and most of them are not criminals. And so we really could have a lot of money. To, yeah, but the newest use. batch of density be, of prisoners is in uh, neighborhoods of pe from people in color, of color. And that largely has to do with um, Clinton's so-called cr anti-crime bill of uh, around 1994 or so, 96 or so. And Jesse Jackson referred to it as the most racist piece of legislation adopted by the United States in a generation. Uh, and it, in effect, penalizes people of color uh, to a greater degree than white people. And a group called Causes and Cures has analyzed it and says that 85% of the drug dealers on the street today are Caucasian, and 85% of the people who are in prison for dealing drugs are people of color. Right. And that's how you keep them from voting. 850,000 black men have lost their right to vote. Uh, because of the Clinton crime bill. Even after they come out of prison, they right. can't vote. Except well, in Vermont. Well, Vermont in Maine, really, too. Yeah, Maine and Vermont are really <laughs> interesting on that, that you can't deprive people of the right to vote, no matter what they do. That's well, we're running out of time here, and it's been very interesting. I, I, I want to thank you both for coming, and uh, I, I wish you the best in the thank upcoming you. election. Thank you. Thank you. And thank I could you. go, you know, I'm the Castro of Liberty Union. I could talk for seven hours. So I hope I didn't hog too much of the... No, you didn't. I thought I wouldn't say anything. So I wouldn't <laughs> well, perhaps we can uh, do it again sometime. Yeah, we're related now yeah. through, a, through a grandchild. <laughs> mm. Yes, you met through the Liberty Union Party, and you, you're, it was it My your son, son married Peter's daughter, and yeah. now they have a little boy in second mm. grade, first who made, grade. Who made that... That the oh, he made the peace pin. I, I make buttons for the, I have a button machine for tempting kids to come over to the table in the high school so I can make buttons. And so I brought the machine down and the kids made them. <laughs> he made one. It says peace with three peace symbols. That's a little peace symbol there, <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, three little peace symbols. He makes everything very little. That's our <laughs> grandson. Yeah, it's our grandson. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's all for uh, Vermont today, this month, and I will, we will have another mission next month, and I hope you, you will join us then. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. It's, been, uh, it's, it's, fun. it's fun to be able to talk and know that there are some people out there who are listening to something they would not otherwise get to hear.